Namaste. Hello. And today I'm going to talk you through the extended triangle pose. So this is a standing posture which involves stretching of the side body. So it's like a lateral um, side stretch. Um, it involves stretching um, of your hips, um, your thighs, it also does your internal obliques, um, your triceps, and ranges from the tip of your fingers down to your hip and essentially your foot. Um, so it's a really deep stretch and it should be avoided if you've got any issues with like your hips or knees just because you're putting quite a lot of pressure on your knee when you're bending over your um, body. Um, also if you've got any issues with like your ankle joints, your hip joints, um, if you've got high blood pressure, um, if you've got any um, sort of aches and pains, then I would definitely avoid this um, posture. Okay, so I'll just show you how to enter the posture. So we would stand at the front of our mat, interlacing us. So toes touching, ankles and heels touching, knees tightened and up. <clears throat> Thighs engaged, hands by the side of your hips, fingers extended outwards, spine extension and elongation, shoulders back and down and away from the ears, head straight, neck straight. So I would move my right leg out, three to four foot apart, your right foot would be at a 90 degree angle and your left foot would be pointing straight. So to get the correct alignment, we need to make sure that our right heel is in the same line as our left heel. So you can also check this by sort of using the wall um, as assistance. So standing back to back with the wall and then you'll be able to push your heels to the bottom of the ground and against the wall, which will give you the correct alignment. Or you could even use your mat here. Um, it's also completely up to you, the positioning of your legs. So they say three to four foot apart, but you can do it a bit more. So you'd always use your foot that's pointing forward to adjust your legs, so you wouldn't use this leg here. Um, so yeah, both of your feet are pushing equally on the mat, 90 degrees with your right leg, your um, right foot and your left foot is pointed forwards. So your knees would be tightened and up, just to ensure that your thigh, um, thigh muscles are then engaged. Your hips would be square. Your spine is extended and elongated as much as possible. Shoulders back and down and away from the ears. Okay. So we would then raise our arms up to shoulder level. And if you can imagine here that you're being pulled from your left arm to your right, but just to get, just to make sure that you're stretching your arms as much as possible and your arms are shoulder level. Okay. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna bend over, bend our torso slightly to the right, and then drop our arms down to the ground. Okay. So here, you should be getting a really good stretch of your hamstrings and quads. So beside your bending over, your hamstrings and quads will be used. But then on the other side, you'll be getting a really good stretch of your internal obliques, triceps, and the whole of your side body. So when you're in this position as well, it's completely up to you. You can have your hands perpendicular, or you can have them over your body like this. But you just need to make sure your abs 
abdomen, chest and chin is turning towards the sky. So this will give you the proper stretch of your side body. And with your hands, it's completely up to you. Um, you can use props for assistance. So you can use a block. So if you can't reach the ground, you can either have the block this way or this way here, whatever feels comfortable with you. So I'll just show you long ways up first. Okay. And then I'm just going to bend over slightly up and down, up here. You can see my fingertips are touching the block. And I can feel a really deep stretch in the side of my body. Or if comfort is more better for you, you can have this way. So, that way, and now. So if comfortable for you as well, you're able to bend your knee, completely up to you, use the block or even place your hand on your shin or even, say if you wanted to use a chair, this is not a chair but you can use it for assistance, so you can also use that if you need it a little bit higher. So hands can either go straight up, pointing up to the sky or across the side of your body. And the hands and the hips. So in this position, we just need to make sure that we try and um, open like our chest as much as possible. So we keep, as we inhale, we then exhale and bend more deeper into the posture to kind of try and go a little bit deeper, but don't push yourself. So every inhale, we're expanding our diaphragm and then exhaling slowly into a more deeper position but you don't want to go too far just go with how your body feels and um, it'll feel different at different times in the day or I don't know um, if you've been practicing yoga for a long time and then stop it might feel a bit more harder it just depends so you just really want to try and avoid injury but just use that exhale to go a little bit more deeper into the posture trying to turn the abdomen, chest and chin. Inhale up. Okay, so uh, this posture's got lots of benefits. So it works your heart chakra, your solar plexus and your root chakra. Um, it's really good for like strengthening and toning of your muscles and it's also good for flexibility of the shoulders and the hip joints also your knee and um, it's really good for kind of concentration and just being into your body because it's more of an intermediate pose and um, it just enables you to kind of like because you're trying to get that perfect posture and you're also as you're resting your arm down you're doing like you've got a deep side stretch but then you're also trying to train um, move your upper body so there's quite a lot going on so it just enables you to kind of stop the thought process or, or being in your head and just kind of be in your body and focus on what you're doing um yeah so props you can use the chair you can use um blocks can place your hands on your shin or on your um, on the floor um, just touching your fingertips and um, yeah and then also you're able to bend your knees if comfortable with you um, have your feet positioned what also feel comfortable with you there's no right or wrong way And then you can also have your fingers either in front of your foot or behind your foot. But again, it's all with how you feel comfortable. Um, 
but if you've got it behind um, your foot, it requires a bit more balance, that might be a little bit harder, but you'll still equally get a good stretch if you have, place your hands in front of your foot. Um, yeah, so again, um, it's a really good spinal extension and we know that by um, strengthening and elongating the spine, it's really good for our central nervous system as that's where it's located as well as the brain. Um, it's really good for strength, toning, just being in your body, um, strengthening, mobilisation of the joints, um, removing blockages in your chakras, um, it also involves um, air, earth and fire element, so it'll get the blood pumping around your body and it also changes the flow of, like, the direction of our blood flow. So this helps in um, like ensuring that nutrients and oxygen travels around our body more quickly, also reducing toxins. Um, yeah, so there's a variety of different benefits. There's lots of different variations as well. Um, you just need to make sure that you don't push yourself and kind of go at your own abilities. Everyone's bodies are different. Um, and I wouldn't do this if you've got any heart issues, any severe pain in like your back or like your knee joints, ankle joints, hip joints. Um, yeah, cool. Right, namaste.